So this is what's called the incline plane. So in other words, we've got a, a model of a little cart that's on a sort of road that can be inclined or made in different angles. We've got a little uh, protractor here that can measure the angle of the road. We've got a weight hanging here, which goes to a pulley, which goes to our little wagon. And with it, we can investigate uh, frictional forces, wheels, the loading of wagons, and all sorts of other interesting effects. Now, at the moment, we've balanced our little cart or wagon with some weights here. So if you like, the two are balanced, so the cart is neither going forward or backwards, and the weight is neither dropping. Now, in the ideal case, of course, if there was no friction anywhere, and the wheels were perfect, if you put a tiny little weight here, the cart would move. So this weight could correspond, if you like, to a horse drawing the cart, or a modern day equivalent, the motor of an engine in a car. Now, at the moment, we've set this up for a certain road angle. If we increase the road angle, which I can do by adjusting this screw so that we get a higher road, obviously, as we change the angle of the road, basically we're changing the balancing of the system. The cart now flows down, and so to move it, we have to add other weights. Now, the amount of weight you have to add, you can work out using trigonometry. It turns out that uh, the higher the angle, of the road, the greater amount of weight obviously you have to have, and you can use trigonometry to work out what these weights are. Now, we can investigate all sorts of interesting things, but you can see on the road here, there's a little bump. And as the wheels come up to this bump, obviously the wheels have to then go over this bump, which requires extra force. And you can think of the bump itself, the angle that the wheels hit the bump, is in itself like an inclined plane. And so where the, the wheels hit it, that angle that it makes as it initially hits the bump will also be like a model of, the, of this whole thing. And we'd need to work out the forces with that. And there's a certain things you can work out. For example, bigger wheels, the angle will be slightly lower than if there are smaller wheels. So in some ways, bigger wheels are always an advantage. Also, um, the wheels act like a lever. So the larger the wheels, the greater the lever the easier it is to overcome any frictional effects on the axles. So you might say that the bigger the wheels, the better, but of course you can't have super massive wheels because they're completely unpractical. So what often on, on, a, on a car, well perhaps not on a car, but certainly on a horse and cart, you'd have the back wheels very big and the small wheels on the front. And the small wheels allowed you to control the wagon very well, but the back wheels uh, are where you can put all the weight because it you can also investigate using this piece of equipment the forces required to go over bumps depending on where you put your load of your cart. If you put it in the middle, for example, it turns out that the mass or the weight of the load is dispersed evenly on the wheels, which means that actually you only need half the energy to go over a bump, the other half when the back wheels go over the bump. Uh, if you put all the weight on the back wheels, then the front wheels go over very easily, but then you'll need all the force for the back. So you can investigate how to load a wagon or a car using this very simple apparatus. And you can investigate small and big wheels. So actually, although it's a toy, and although it's a rather nice looking toy, it had lots of practical uses for understanding vehicles, which is obviously important today.